Woody vegetation is extremely important to certain species. Um, black rhino are browsers, so that's why they have a different mouth to a white rhino. A white rhino is more of a grazer, like a cow, but a black rhino basically browses off shrubs and trees. Um, Lewa, in the past, was, was, had a lot more woody vegetation. Um, had a lot more um, trypanolobium, which is whistling thorn, and also these yellow fever trees that you can see around. And because Lewa, in the past, did not have elephant on it. Um, elephants started, I think, in the 1980s. Um, and then when Lewa became um, a rhino sanctuary, um, it basically became more and more popular with, with elephant because it's secure. They feel safe here, and obviously there was lots to eat. So in the past, when they did come, they'd migrate through, and they would give the area a chance to regenerate. But now they hold here, they stay here, and they, they sad to say, I mean, they're lovely animals, but they're destructive. Now that we've got more and more elephant, um, they have, have basically made woody vegetation into, into a savanna, into plains. So we have big areas of plains where there are no trees. So as far as even 15 years ago, we realized this was an issue and we had to do something. And that's why exclusion zones were introduced. So exclusion zones basically keep out elephant and giraffe. Giraffe are also quite destructive because they, especially young acacias, they, they tend to nip off the buds on the top and just stop it from growing. Um, and elephant basically take out the whole tree. And, I mean, you see areas on Lewa where it looks a little bit like a grave site because just dead trees. So it, you know, we had to do something about it, especially when Lewa became a, a full-on wildlife sanctuary because otherwise we would have just been left with nothing. Um, you know, and even things like leopard, um, lots, of, lots of animals need trees. Trees bring, bring rain. So that's why we introduced exclusion, these giraffe and elephant exclusion zones. So an exclusion zone could be anything from one kilometer long to 12 kilometers long. And it is basically, although we have reconfigured it in the last few years, it is basically two wires which um, stand about five feet from the ground. So all other animals can go underneath. Zebra, impala, buffalo, rhino can go under the wires. But elephant uh, and giraffe, in theory, cannot. Um, we've had to make them a little bit more sophisticated over the last few years because the elephant have become pretty clever. And before we just used to have two wires, a live and an earth, so that if the elephant touched the live and an earth, it would get an electric shock. But they became quite wise to that and they knocked down the poles that were holding the wires and they were breaking into exclusion zones. We spent quite a lot of money in the last five years upgrading exclusion zones. We've done about eight or nine. Um, and all these exclusion zones vary from like two to seven kilometers. We've tried to make them a little bit smaller now so that they're easier to maintain. So they have definitely worked. Um, they have been very, very successful. Having said that, the elephant have also learnt ways to, to try and get in because it's basically like, like trying to keep a child out of a sweet shop because they can see and they can smell all the vegetation inside the exclusion zone and they try and get in. So they've learned all sorts of ways of doing it. We've had to sadly detusk elephant in the past, make their tusks shorter so they don't break fences. That also includes boundary fences because they break out into the community. But their, their latest mode of getting into exclusion zones is going under the wire. We basically look for, for, for areas that particular trees grow. And when I say particular trees, it's mainly acacias. So for example, these trees around us are all 
Acacia xanthropheia, which are, are fever trees and grow along rivers, um, and, and more sort of wet, moist areas rather than, than dry areas. So we, we target these a lot. And then you also have um, Acacia drepanolobium, which is the whistling thorn, um, which they don't grow into huge trees, but they're, they're real rhino food. Rhino really like them. So we'll find areas where, where there's potential for, for them to grow. And what, we, what we've been doing recently is rather than put exclusion zones in new areas, we've extended 